Welcome everybody, I'm Sean Sederberg and I'm here for another episode of the Video Focus with the State Aviation Journal. And I am here in EAA Oshkosh in Oshkosh, Wisconsin for Air Venture, the 70th uh, anniversary of Air Venture, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the greatest celebration of aviation on the planet, in my opinion. And I think they coined that too. I think so. they did. And I'm here today uh, with Brian Beatty and he is the owner and builder of this beautiful award-winning aircraft we have back here in RV7. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about it, but just to kind of give you an introduction of the aircraft from my perspective, I had the opportunity to take a uh, photographs of this airplane over the beautiful Colorado Rockies. Um, it's been featured on the 2023 Colorado Airport Directory, the Vans calendar, the cover of the general aviation news for the gear and pictures so this plane has really gotten around literally all the way to oshkosh too so last year was your second first trip to oshkosh second yes. trip so brian let's go ahead and get started introduce yourself tell tell me who you are who you're with and why the heck are you here thank you well i appreciate it. this was a lot of fun for me as you mentioned this is a, a second trip for me out here to Oshkosh. I had been building this plane for uh, 14 years. Uh, it was the total time it took to, to complete, 15 and a half to get it painted. Um, and this is kind of with, with EAA and with the way EAA is focused on the home building and, and the, the experimental market, this is the place where you end up. This is the place where you want to come and show it and see what everybody else has. And so that's always been a uh, a big dream of mine to, to get finished and to bring it here. So ultimately we, uh, we uh, got it done and um, I, I have been flying this now for about, th about two and a half years. Um, and it's just been flying flawlessly, having a lot of fun and, and going places. So that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Now let's go way back. Let's, mm -hmm. let's figure out where this aviation bug was implanted into you and how you got so inspired about aviation. I know you did uh, you're not in a career in aviation, but you still have that aviation bug. And so tell me a little bit about how that got instilled in you. It's, it's kind of an interesting story. My father went to the Air Force Academy. Um, he was a uh, pilot, uh, flew gunships uh, in Vietnam. Um, and I grew up around the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. So going to Air Force football games, the flyovers, I mean, I was out around aviation a lot. Um, my uh, late stepfather had a, a Bonanza V-35B. I wasn't uh, terribly interested in aviation as a youngster. I was around planes, but they were just so common in my life. And so flying really wasn't a, a major um, a dream that I had at the time. Um, after I had graduated college, after 9-11 of all things, um, I got a little patriotic and thought I was, I'd already was out of school. And so I, I researched doing the OCS program and essentially going into pilot training as a, as a graduate from university and trying to travel that route. And ultimately that didn't pan out, but um, in that investigative process, I was basically told without my pilot's license, I had a 0% chance of, of that even coming true. And so I was working for myself at the time and it allowed me the opportunity to just go fly three, four days a week. And it took me four months to get my, my license. And I, um, I was able to, um, uh, I was able to get my license in four months. I soloed in seven hours. I mean, I was just wow. focused on it. And I was not turned on to these aircraft until 2005 when I was living briefly in Atlanta, uh, Atlanta area up, up north. And I had the opportunity to manage a small private airport, uh, which is now gone. It was swallowed up by development. But uh, there was a builder there who was building these and the seven, this is an RV7, was had just been released about a year and a half before and um, so I um, started investigating it looked at it and it, in with the experimental market if you if you didn't know anything about it you'd never knew they existed until you get into that market and then you become immersed in it and the build market is is such a giving and uh, th there's a common saying pay it forward and so you'll you'll have builders that are trying to help other builders and so just going through that whole process allowed me to, to experience the what is essentially the heart of the EAA um, 
uh, the belief system of helping to people find aviation, how they enjoy it, and how they proliferate it. So, and help them get to Oshkosh. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the perfect example of that was, talk about your alternator issue. I did, I, I, that's a great question. I was on my way here on Saturday, and um, immediately after leaving Denver, I started to develop electrical issues. Um, almost made the decision to continue, but I had some things just not working that I was comfortable with. So I did an about face, came home, and started digging into it. And I had an alternator that had completely uh, crapped out. So um, had to kind of go into panic mode. Um, I'm a part of some social media groups where I posted. And this plane is fairly known at this point, and so a lot of people wanted to, to help me get to Oshkosh, and a fellow builder uh, in Denver is building an RV-14, had the exact same alternator. Michael uh, uh, reached out to me and said, I'm not flying yet, if you want it, come get it. And ironically, he was 30 minutes from leaving to go get on commercial to fly here. <laughs> so he was on his way to the airport, I went to his house, I got the part, went back to the hangar, and. Uh, after a 12-hour day, uh, got it swapped out, flown, and I left the next morning at, at 05.30. So. That's awesome. That's, that's exactly how what you were explaining there. It's, what a great story that is. So let's kind of talk about the build a little bit here. You know, I, I, I don't think a lot of people understand what goes into a build. And uh, so talk about from when you got the kit and mm -hmm. talk about kind of the steps that you had to go through in order to get the completed. Yeah, so the RVs, Vans, uh, is right behind us here. Um, Vans is a kit manufacturer and they have been in business since pretty much the 80s uh, when they started to become more of a, a, a prevalent kit. Um, and I can tell you that uh, as of today, it's the most popular kit aircraft in the history of aviation. And ultimately, um, you, when you select your kit, they come in in packages. So you typically start with the tail, which is the empennage kit, and so it's it allows people to kind of dip their toe in the water, um, so that if they don't enjoy building it, they're not in for tens of thousands of dollars, and it, it's just a one small section. And it also teaches what are essentially the critical. Um, skills that are going to be necessary as you build the kit uh, into the future. And then from the tail, the empennage, then you move to either the wings or the fuselage. And then there's a finish kit and a firewall forward kit. Ultimately, the kit only comes with the airframe and the ability to roll. So there's no engine, no instrumentation, no avionics, uh, no wiring, no interiors, no paint, no engine, nothing. So all of that is a journey in itself. Yep. And with aviation, with in, as with anything, it's easier to walk in footsteps that have already been taken. And that's where the RV community literally is one of the greatest communities out there, as witnessed by my, uh, my alternator issue. There are hundreds of build logs online. There are so many people out there who have feedback. I mean, when I posted my issue with the alternator, I had two, three dozen people piping in just to give feedback on solutions and, and how to fix things and what to do. And so ultimately that's what makes the RV community such a, a, a fantastic group. It's not the only. Mm -hmm. Rands is here and Zenith is here and uh, Sling. There are lots of other aircraft companies out there that have a similar environment, but that's the culture. That's how that gets fostered by the continuance of education and pushing it on to the next person. Yep. Yeah, very good, and that's what built this air show, really, in fact, uh, Experimental uh, Aviation Association, so, our aircraft association. Now, you had a little help with that aircraft, putting that together. Right? It's a little, a little hard to get into certain places <laughs> there, so tell me about the help you had for this I aircraft. did. I, I've had a lot of hands touch this plane. Um, if I, I, I should have kept a book and had everybody sign a, a guest book, so to speak, but in particular, I've had both of my kids help me. Uh, my daughter, who is uh, 16, she helped a little bit, but in particular, my son yeah. really took uh, uh, an attachment to it, and it became kind of a challenge for him to learn how to rivet, to learn how to do certain things. And when I laid up the fiberglass around the canopy, you have to, I had to lay it up with it closed. And at the time, the uh, front skin just in front of the, the canopy was not on. And in order to break it loose, he had to climb feet first down in and under the rudder pedals. <laughs> he was 10 at the time. 
Um, and then we he stood up and, and was able to pop it loose from, from inside. So uh, he's also helped me finish some riveting places that I, I couldn't get to. So That's great. Uh, it, it's built a fire in him, so an yeah. interest in working with his hands, understanding drawings, uh, understanding process. Um, and he's asked me again, he said, what are we building next? And so uh, we're, we're in discussions at this that's point. That's great. Sounds like we got another builder coming around. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Now I'd be remiss not to mention that this aircraft is on display here at EA Air Venture at the Evoke Paint Tent. Um, it's what a beautiful uh, paint job this is. And I also would like to mention that in this photo <laughs> is Brian, of course, flying. And then we have the communication or our uh, Edu aviation education and outreach uh, specialist Hetty Carlson with the Colorado Division of Aeronautics sitting right seat here and she's also the designer of this beautiful paint scheme so talk about a little bit of how that process went with he working with Hetty on, on that. That project. was a fun process I, I kind of gave her um, carte blanche I, I had indicated what I liked and what sort of a visual um, what things from a visual standpoint caught my eye and it was not the linear lines it was more of the sweeping uh, curving lines that capture more of the flight uh, the essence of flight and so ultimately I kind of gave her a, 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 a empty paper blank sheet of paper opportunity and she nailed it um, and it was her first rendition it was about 90% of this design is is what she ended up uh, uh, having uh, direct um, design control of and then ultimately working with Evoke uh, in, in Gadsden, Alabama. Evoke is they're the best in the world and we added the carbon fiber accents, uh, the tail was added later I wanted to do a nod to the home state uh, where I'm born and raised um, and then they have some uh, kind of carbon fiber hand airbrushed accents um, that are just incredible and it's uh, like I said their attention to detail on everything is just fantastic and that's why we yeah. it's, it's why I chose them to, to well, do that. Well it certainly is a beautiful painting job and man the, the the craftsmanship that went into the paint job itself is, is fantastic as well um, just a beautiful aircraft and Indeed. a great job Hetty on the design and I like to call this Colorado's RV really I mean it's not, we're just gonna go ahead and coin that so talk a bit about some of the cool places you've been uh, with this aircraft Wow uh, even in the short time period um, the we've been to Monument Valley Utah uh, we've been to Sedona. Uh, I've traveled. I travel for business from time to time. So I have flown to Texas. I've flown to South Dakota, Wyoming. Um, I've been to Mount Rushmore, Devil's Tower, uh, Telluride a couple times. All over the mountains. Um, the next goal is going to be to go to Taos or Santa Fe because we can get there so quickly. Uh, it's been to Phoenix twice. Uh, it's been to Alabama for paint. Um, my parents also live in, um, one's in Colorado Springs, the other's in, in outside Little Rock, Arkansas, where it's been twice. And then it's flown here uh, yeah. twice, so the last two years I've been. So um, in the short two years that it's been flying, I've got just hit 250 hours flying here. Wow. So I'm averaging about 200 and, or about 125 hours a year uh, in flying, which is quite a bit. Very cool. That's awesome. So. Very, very cool. Now this is sort of off subject off of the, off of the airplane subject, but talking about aviation and the young people getting into mm -hmm. aviation um, and maybe adults that want to get into aviation mm -hmm. and build their own aircraft. What is, a, what is a, a couple pieces of advice that you would give to those people wanting to get into aviation and then possibly building their own aircraft? Well, and I said it earlier, and that's following footsteps. Um, what is, so for me, I had to humbly accept staying in my lane. And when it comes to building aircraft, building systems, understanding how things interact, um, I think it's critical to A, ask questions. Don't think you can know everything or figure everything out on your own. It isn't worth it because there, this isn't all digital everything. I don't have any gas, steam, electric gauges. It's all digital screens. Um, so it was taking a leap of faith knowing that that's the next jump in technology. Um, but it was asking people how that stuff works, how you get things to interact correctly, and, and kind of how you design an airplane in today's world um, to function. And so I had to, um, I just, I, I was, 
I loved to research. I loved to go out and read build logs. And that's really what you do is you spend hours reading others' processes and go, I want that piece, but I'm going to, I'm going to mate it with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do an offshoot of both. Or, I mean, I could take you around the plane and say, I learned this from this guy and I learned this from his, but I changed it and put it over here. I mean, you end up doing a lot of that where mm -hmm. you, you, um, you mature ideas that are already out there. There's, there's a lot of reinventing of the wheel that doesn't need to happen because it's already out there. And so you just research it. Very good, very awesome. Now, let's talk about that Lindy Award. What does it take to win? This is the <laughs> award winner last year. Congratulations. Thank you. What does it take to get that award and, and what are they looking for? You know, it, it was such a learning experience for me um, to learn what judges look for. Um, there are, because of the caliber of plane that comes to Oshkosh nowadays, the level of perfection that is required is astounding. Down to uh, pipe clamp tabs being anywhere from a half inch to five eighths of an inch tops. Uh, rivet heads being completely visible even under paint. This is an all metal aircraft. If you don't show all your rivets, that's a deduction. Um, gaps being consistent, um, they, they will literally pull out micrometers and get measurements because that's where the level of quality is. Mm -hmm. um, it's exhausting as a builder and I didn't necessarily mean to build it that nice, it just turned out that way. It was a 14 year build, it took me a long time, but I, I do like to work with my hands and I like to try and be detailed and clean, but I've seen other builds that are even spectacular beyond mine. Um, and so it's just the level of care that you put in it. But um, the judging process taught me a lot about what they look at and what they look for. Right. Little things that, that I know now that going into it my first year, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did a spectacular job. And, and again, congratulations on Thank that Lindy Award last year. And, and um, thanks again for taking the time to uh, tell the story. Hopefully it gets somebody uh, excited about flying and building their own aircraft. So again, thank you. And I'm Sean Sutterberg with the State Aviation Journal's Video Focus, and we'll see you at the next episode. Johnson Creek. How could I not mention Johnson Creek? Oh, what's Johnson Creek? Perfect timing.